So up until this point, we've only really looked at spontaneous voltaic cells. Now we can look at electrolytic cells. This is where you have a non-spontaneous reaction. So that's what electrolysis is. So this, uh, this example here is looking at the electrolysis of sodium chloride. This is how you can, you can take sodium chloride, you can make liquid sodium and, uh, and chlorine gas. That's not a spontaneous process. Um, this is, you have to force this reaction to happen. If you had water involved here, if you had an aqueous solution, you get totally different products. You don't get the same thing. Um, so in order to, to electrolyze the salt, you can't have any water involved because then uh, water will compete to be ox oxidized and, uh, and reduced. So electrolysis, these are non-spontaneous reactions. Mostly what we're gonna look at is quantitative electrolysis. So using a little bit of stoichiometry and some unit conversions to figure out you know, how, how long would it take to make a certain amount of some solid from, from a salt. And so a couple things that, that we should know um, when you're talking about current, uh, that's, an, that's a coulomb per second, one amp is one coulomb per second. If you've taken physics, you probably have seen a lot of these units before. Um, physics is not a prereq for this class, but you'll see that there's a lot of overlap um, between certain topics. So current one amp is a coulomb per second. Coulomb is just a charge, so it's like how much charge is, is passing through um, per second. Uh, Faraday, that's how many coulombs you have per mole, passing per mole. Um, and we're going to be looking at like half reactions where we need to look at the stoichiometry. So like in this reaction, we have aluminum uh, reacting with three electrons. So for every three electrons, you get one, every, yeah, every three moles of electrons, you get one mole of aluminum. So we need to know the stoichiometry of the, the reaction that we're dealing with. We need to know some of these unit conversions. Um, if we know the amps and we know the seconds, we can figure out how much time, so or how much charge is going through there. So if we know the current and we know the time, we can get the charge. If we know the charge, we can figure out how many moles of electrons we have. If we know the moles of electrons, we can get the moles of the solid. And then if we know the moles of the solid, we can get to um, the grams. All right, so it's basically like four steps in order to do these problems. Okay, so this might be easier just to, to do the example and then we can talk about all the all the pieces as we go through. So calculate the mass of aluminum in grams. So we're trying to find the mass of aluminum um, produced by, in one hour. So that's our time. And we have aluminum chloride. So this is our half reaction. I'm always going to give you the half reaction. So I'll give you that. And then they give you the current. They say it's 10, 10 amps. So if we know amps and we know seconds, we can get to coulombs, all right? And then we know that there are 96,485 coulombs for every one mole of electrons. And in this problem, for every three moles of electrons, we get one mole of aluminum. And then for every one mole of aluminum, we know the molar mass of aluminum is like, 27 grams about. So that's all we're going to do here. This, this is our pathway. They give us amps and they give us time. We need to convert that time to seconds and multiply them together and then that will tell us our charge. And we know that that's how much charge is transferred for every one mole of electrons. That's just, that's a constant. That's, that's the Faraday's constant. And then from the stoichiometry of the reaction, we know that three moles of electrons um, are passed for every for every one mole of aluminum that you make, solid aluminum. And then the last part is just the molar mass. So we need to take this one hour, that's the first thing we need to do, and convert that to seconds. Um, one hour is 60 minutes. One minute is 60 seconds, so that's 3,600 seconds. If you did that in your head, you don't have to show that. <laughs> that's fine. So I have to find the coulombs, I have 3,600 seconds, amps times seconds, amps is right there, uh, 10 amps, and this gives us a coulomb because an amp is just a coulomb per second. So seconds cancel and you end up with something in coulombs. So when you put that in scientific notation, you get 3.60 times 10 to the four. Okay, because this is one, two, three, and then another one's four. And that's in coulombs. So now I'm gonna take that 3.60 times 10 to the 4 coulombs, and I'm going to say for every 96, 4, 
85 coulombs, I have one mole of electrons. So that will tell me how many moles of electrons I'm transferring. And then I'm going to use this stoichiometry for every three moles of electrons, I have one mole of aluminum. And then for every one mole of aluminum, I get 27 grams of aluminum. And then when I work all that out, I get about 3.36 grams of aluminum. So the setup is pretty much the same for all these problems. The only thing that can change, sometimes they give you amps and seconds to get coulombs. Sometimes they give you the mass and you do the whole thing in reverse. So we'll do a couple of those. Let's try another one that's kind of set up the same way as this. And then we'll, we'll flip it upside down. So here we have um, magnesium and they tell you calculate the mass. Okay, so calculate the mass. That means this is pretty similar to what we did before. They give you time and they give you amps. So amps times seconds gives us coulombs. The first step, we're going to find coulombs. Amps. Remember, an amp is just a coulomb per second. That's how we get to coulombs. Times 10 to the 3 seconds. This is going to give us coulombs. And that works out to be 2.4 times 10 to the 5. 2.40 times 10 to the 5 coulombs. Now I'm going to take that 2.40 times 10 to the 5 coulombs and say that there are 96, 485 coulombs for every one mole of electrons. And then I go up here and I say, all right, well, there's two moles of electrons for every one mole of magnesium. And then I want to get to um, one mole of magnesium. I want to go from moles to grams. So I'm going to use the molar mass, so 24.3 grams of magnesium. So to get this, it was just amps times seconds. This is just Faraday's constant. This one is just stoichiometry from the reaction. And then this one's just the molar mass. Boom. Multiply everything on top, multiply everything on bottom. Top over bottom should give you 30.2 grams of magnesium. Now let's see if you can reverse that. In this problem, the second one, they say how many seconds, so they want you to find time, they give you mass and amps. So what happens, so look at this problem, but what if we started with mass and we went uh, grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to coulombs, coulombs um, to, to seconds. We can just go in reverse. So we'll start over here. As long as you know your units and everything, you, you can pretty much keep track of everything. So if I started here with 50 grams, if I know grams, I know moles. So I'm going to use the molar mass. Right, that's just molar mass to one mole of magnesium because I started off with grams of magnesium. Okay. And then if I know mol the, the half reaction is the same up here. For every one mole of magnesium, I need two moles of electrons. So for every one mole of magnesium, I have two moles of electrons. So I just did grams to moles, moles to moles of electrons. And then I know that for, I have, an, I have a conversion between moles and charge. So for every uh, one mole of electrons, I pass 96, 485 coulombs. And then an amp, is you can could, you could stop there and figure that out. The last part is to say an amp, you like one amp is one coulomb per one second. So if I had 100 amps, I have 100 coulombs per one second. So here I have 100 coulombs per one second and that's how I get to seconds. So when I work all that out I end up with 3.97 times 10 to the 3 seconds. So again just working backwards on this one you had molar mass and then you had moles to um, electrons and then you had your Faraday's constant and then you had this amps times seconds is, um, is a coulomb. Right? Molar mass and then here's where you had your stoichiometry and here's where you had your F, and then here is your um, amps times seconds gives you coulombs. There you go. Or uh, 